I'm a big fan of like focusing on goals and have a dream to realize it, but like you can focus on being on The Sopranos all you want. That's not going to bring the show back. <laughs> it's true. <laughs>to Screen Queen Stream. We're your host. I'm Jessica Cameron. And I'm Heather Dord. And this is Solomon. Yes, as you all know by now, I hope. Yes. So today we're going to be doing an AMA, which is an Ask Me Anything or Ask Us Anything, as it turns out. So we went out to you, the wonderful people of the internet, our lovely Patreons, as well as YouTube subscribers, and asked you to ask us your questions. Tell us your lies. I don't know. This is just random. But yes. Yes, so we got questions from kind of everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, yeah. YouTube. Gosh, you guys sent so many questions in all different places. It took us a minute to collect them all, but we got them, and we are happy to answer. So we'll kick it right off. Absolutely. Uh, as always, though, before we start, if you want to check out our Patreon, we'd be much obliged. We offer amazing perks monthly for all those that subscribe to us. And since YouTube no longer wants to pay anyone who isn't one of their top YouTubers, Yes. All right. So first and foremost is Vernon Rogers. And his question is, when did you decide to get into acting, filmmaking, and what inspired this? And that's for both of us. Well, I feel like we've gone over this, but let's go over it one more time. <laughs> one more time with feeling. <laughs> right. Um, for me, I was stuck in a horrible job that was a career that I went to school for, which was fashion design in Ohio. And uh, upon three months at a major corporation, uh, after exceeding all expectations, they came to me and they had a problem with my speech. Specifically, they felt that I spoke too fast. So they told me I had to take speech classes. And when I couldn't find speech classes, my immediate boss was like, you should take an acting class and then just talk slowly around the stupid people. And that's what I did. And she's like, we'll just convince them it's working. Uh, but it was for the best because I was really miserable. And I realized after university that the creative job that I thought I would love in real life was a nightmare and it was not creative in any capacity. So doing acting classes and such not only like helped quiet those above me from this issue, but also it gave me a creative outlet and I just fell madly in love. And then uh, immediately from there, I was like, I need to figure out how to do more of this. And then after two years of doing more, I was like, okay, I need to figure out how to make it a career. Yep. Um, and there you go. Mine's a little bit more simple than that. Honestly, I always loved movies uh, since I was a kid and shows. Uh, but one that really moved me as a child was, weirdly, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I just really liked that show. I was a bit of a loner um, in school and sort of awkward and stuff. And Buffy made me feel like I could be a superhero and all these kind of things. And I love vampires. And I just love that it was very girl power and sort of inspiring and you know nice guys don't always finish last kind of thing or can be awesome that sort of thing so i wanted to do that you know for wait, wait, how is it not nice guys finish last no xander well, has a huge not crush xander. on Buffy, xander is, he finished last also in real life Z and then <laughs> xander's not a nice guy he's just a bit of he's a nice guy he's the nice he's like the plus nice guy. a bit of a and then like angel also really nice can't have the girl of his dreams because he's a vampire she's not it would be toxic that would have been different if like, he didn't roll <laughs> off and get his own show <laughs> but i still feel like like everything about buffy is all of the nice guy finished giles great nice guy has no time for a social life because he, all. he used it all when he was a kid having sex with everyone and being the sure ripper yeah <laughs> He partied out his ways. I mean, uh, <laughs> maybe awkward people don't have to just live in a hole in their parents' basement. Maybe that's a better term for it. Either way, it was very girl power. It really was. Um, and I just loved it. I love Sarah Michelle Gellar as Buffy, specifically the first five seasons. The last two get iffy for me when they change networks. But either way, I wanted to do what Buffy did for me, the way it inspired me and gave me hope and kind of helped me through my high school years and all the above. I wanted to do that for someone else for another little girl someday, so that's kind of what set me in motion uh, to get into acting. So yeah, there you go, done. done. Question number two from geek underscore legion on Twitter. They ask, what are your favorite accents to listen to while talking or listening to other people? I'd say British, just any British accent. <laughs> I mean, I like Scottish, I like Irish, I like I feel English. like you just like all accents. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> I, anywhere up in that area, man. I, I just love their accents. I find them so amusing. And honestly, they're just nice to listen to. 
I really like French and Italian as well as British, Ireland, Scotland. Yeah, yeah. Like I they're do. really, really pretty. Yeah. They're... Pretty sounding accents. Yeah. So from one of our favorite patrons, uh, Paul Yan, uh, he said, if you ladies could join any TV show, what would it be and why? I wonder if this is current or past. Well, I feel like it just, whatever comes to your, well, let's do current because I feel like past is over. Like sure. that's impossible. I'm a big fan of like focusing on goals and have a dream to realize it, but like you can focus on being on The Sopranos all you want. That's not going to bring the show back. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, for me, I would say I really, really want to be on an hour serial, either medical or legal drama. Like I really, really, really want to do that. Uh, probably more on the lawyer side because I really, I really love the law and all the legalese, and uh, you know, I've, I've had a passion for that for a very long time. I chose not to become a lawyer, uh, only because I don't want to be in a position where I have to defend people that are guilty. I'm too honest. I would literally be like, "Fuck my license. He did it. He told me he killed her. Mm. Bye. Sorry. I can no longer practice law. There's two hundred thousand dollars of education down the toilet." Uh, so that's why my lawyer, when I was a kid, he was my family lawyer, uh, he told me I should never be a lawyer because you can't do that. <laughs> Not if you want to continue. No, but also if you want a conviction. But he's like, technically, he's like, in that situation, that would just get it thrown out of court. Right. It wouldn't lead to convict the person. Right. Uh, time out, though. Um, what legal show, though? Do you have a particular one in mind? Like suits. You know what? Oh, I love suits. <laughs> I love suits. I think it's such a great show. It's not. Is it an hour drama? I don't even know. I think it, it might be thirty minutes. Is it an hour? No, okay. I, I I love suits. I think that's fantastic. I also love like the Law and Order shows. Yeah, I do too. All SBU of them. Specific. You know what I mean? Yeah, like they're really really strong. I also across the board I find those drama specifically the the legal ones really do a wonderful job of writing these multifaceted female characters that are kind of everything in real life and very authentic i feel like they're kind of like the standout suits is one that i especially love and is near and dear to my heart because i just feel like all the women are so different so varied but so real and authentic right. and so not typical hollywood uh, which is why i'm really sad that megan markle got married to the, is marrying the prince and she's leaving because that knock on wood won't be the downfall of the show but it probably will because she's yeah. such an integral part i don't know how they'll carry on without her I mean, however, though, that does mean there's a female role open. There you I'm go. I'm just saying. <laughs> I was just thinking that, honestly, when I said suits. That's why I mentioned it. Um, for me, it would be the show that's upcoming, which I haven't, is not even out yet, but I know they're in the works of doing. What if it sucks? I would pray that it doesn't, but it's called The Passage, and it's based on a series, an apocalyptic like vampire slash zombie series that I absolutely love. And I would want to play uh, the character of Alicia because she's super cool, uh, super strong female character. Um, that would be the ultimate show that I would love to be part of because seriously, I, I just, the books are awesome. They're intense, but they're awesome. How about a show that's actually on TV? Yeah, I was going to say Game of Thrones, but I'm not British, so that's never going to happen because uh, if you don't know, they only hire British people aside from, uh, what's his face? I can't think of his name right. Peter Dinklage. Aside from him, everyone else is British on that show. And he's just amazing. So. And he is just amazing. He's an exception to the rule for good reasons. Mute it. Um, okay, so what other show? Um, you know what? Kind of, I really like uh, the show Ozark. Ozark. Oh, yeah, that's great. I really like that show. I think it's fantastic. I understand what it's like to live in the deep the country sticks. and also deal with a bunch of bad people. <laughs> people doing nefarious things so I feel like I really identify with that show so I could totally be on that show sign me up <laughs> okay so next question that's your turn oh yes Billy Bowman asks who are your celebrity crushes oh man you're Robert Pattinson yeah no I mean yeah yes, yes but yes, I'm trying to think of like who's a yes. bigger one right now I'm trying to think of like who's more prominent. Like who do I really have a celebrity crush on? You know, I just don't have. You know, you know what? Who who it's always been? Who it's been since the beginning of time? And this only comes to mind because my friend and me were talking about this the other day. It's been Jared Leto. Jared Leto since Thirty Seconds to Mars, The Kill, Panic Room, 
Rec Room for a Dream, freaking that high school drama that I can't think of the name of right now, but seriously, I have had a crush on Jared Leto since I was a child, and he is still attractive today. So when he isn't like shaving his eyebrows and dyeing his hair lime green and stuff like that. But yeah, it would be Jared Leto as my ultimate forever one. My, my like past card that I want like in relationships. Because I've I actually held his leg. I had to hold him up on a rail at a concert while he sang the entire The Kill over me, hunched over me. I was like, yes! I was doing this before cell phones because I've never seen evidence. No, because I was holding his leg. I mean, I couldn't really, what was this supposed to do, crotch shot? I mean, you, yes, you, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly no, what you do. I'm not kidding. If I had let go of him because he was on such a thin rail, he would have fell into the crowd or backwards off the rail. He jumped off the stage onto the rail. He actually kind of kicked my friend Tina sort of in the face a little bit because he did that. We didn't care. She held onto one she leg. She was like, kick me again. She's like, do it again. Oh, no, she, he kicked her in the boot. That's right, because he like landed on the rail and kind of stepped on her boob. But anyways, me and her held each leg and held him up the entire song. And the only reason why he stayed with us the whole time is because we weren't grabbing at him. We literally were just holding him up. But it was amazing. His face was like right here singing. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> so yeah, Jared Leto. <laughs> and I have a picture with him, actually. So right, yeah. you can insert that photo here. There you go. If you find it. I should. Yeah, I just found it the other day. So Okay. So I'm going to name two of them. Uh, the first one is Jason Lewis, who is from Sex and the City. Um, but also, and more importantly, the crush actually didn't happen. Uh, at some point after Sex and the City, he did a small play in Toronto, Ontario, when I was in school with, ironically enough, uh, Catherine, gosh darn it, Canadian Scream Queen. I'm flipping, flipping on her name either way. Um, she was in that werewolf movie. Um, really like her. She's super sweet. Uh, so they both did like this teeny tiny play like literally Maybe 70 seats at most and he was amazing He dyed his hair black and it was like about like the drug culture in the 80s And it was a really great play and he was just so amazing and charming uh, So Jason Lewis for sure he took some time off acting so I'm really excited that he got back because I also think he's just such a wonderful Wonderful talent and also as a director. I'd like to work with him <laughs> uh, Quite frankly and then hold on I want to make sure ah uh, I always fuck up his name, uh, but Justin Hartley, who is Oh, from, yeah. Right? Oh, come on. This you didn't us. even know who he was before you went to the thing. I watched no, him. No, I did. I watched him in Revenge. I watched him in Revenge and a bunch of other stuff. But I... he was like, he was always that good looking guy that was really, really great. But I felt, even now, I feel like his name isn't. People know who he is and they adore him and his work, but he's still not like a household name. No, he's not, of course not. You but, know? I mean, he is for anyone who ever watched Smallville, and you guys know what I'm talking about. Well, and I met him at an event, and he is so charming. Oh, my God. And also really attractive. He's so, he's ridiculously good looking, uh, but also he's so charming. And I, what did I say? I complimented on him on it, because it's something uh, to the extent of, I really love how he plays that character, because it would be really easy to play at one note, because right. he's a stereotypical, superficial actor, but I feel like he gives so much depth to the character in the show This Is Us, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate all the nuances, and he was so touched, he was like, oh my god, he gushed over me, and then he like gave me this big hug, so I had all these women following, like, what did you say to him? <laughs> How do we get him to hug us like that? Right? We'll insert the picture here. Mm. Uh, but no, I he was just amazing. So both of them. But again, like their talent, right? Over and above. Just They're very good looking people, but they're both phenomenally talented. And they're both blonde and blue eyed, just well, as a type. I do. <laughs> I mean, not really. I mean, yeah. you've seen I've gone off type a lot. I know, I know. I'm just saying. I'm like probably the one that goes off type the most. True, true. All right, so from another one of our patrons, and so is Billy, of course, uh, but is Irene Helenowski. Sorry, I probably just butchered that. I suck with names. Uh, name one place anywhere in the world that you would still like to visit and why, assuming money is no object. So this is hard because I've actually been to a lot of places and there's actually some places I'd like to go back to, which is crazy because, you know, we only have a short time in the world. Um, so I'm very hard pressed to like revisit a place if I hadn't seen other places. But my next like big ticket thing that I really want to do is I really want to go to Japan. I love Japanese culture. I love Japanese people. I love Japanese food. And it's just, you know, it's beautiful. It's a small little island. It's all the way out there. Um, I, I would just, yeah, I really, really, really want to go. <laughs> Maybe I'll go to uh, like do like the Kill Bill thing where I'm like <laughs> with the baseball thing. Anyways, but yeah, Japan would be my next bigger 
thing I'd like to do, and it's very expensive. So there you go. I would like to go to Italy. Yes, I haven't been, uh, so I think that it could be really, really fun. So that would be like my goal. I think it'd be super fun. But also, like you, I feel like there's been so many places I've been. But I am one who I'm the actual opposite. So I do want to go. I haven't been to Spain. I haven't been to Italy. Um, I haven't been to Brazil, Peru, so there are a couple places I'd like to go. But for the most part, like I feel like I can go back to London once a year for the rest of my life and be real content. I could visit Ireland or Scotland repeatedly and be real content. Don't get me wrong. Um, I love all those places, but there's so many. I mean, Italy alone, Spain, Peru, Machu Picchu, Brazil. Like, you know, like there's just so correct, much Correct, but see. I also feel like even like in New London, Zealand. as somebody who's been to London three times now, every trip was very different. Yeah. It was all, because again, there's so much to see. And also, I love their culture. So, yeah. um, for me, I I am unlikely to go t to the Asian countries because I had a horrible experience. Japan and is different, though. You know, the culture is different. I know that, but still, I just I don't even want to deal with it. I, I have horrible thinking. appearance. She I didn't like China, which is a specific communist country. It is. <laughs> but still, I, just, one I don't care. out of all of Asia, she is judging all of Asia I based on the yes. one communist Correct. country. Because there's too many other places I want to go in my life. But Japan is not China. I mean, I might be going to Tokyo this year. Yeah. It's just not my not choice. Not the same. But that being said, though, Tokyo is going to be the least best city. You want to go to the smaller little cities I'm around it. I'm getting paid to go. So yeah, I know. But if you can, can <laughs> make a day trip, like, I'll tell you where to go because okay. you'll have a freaking good time. I have a movie that's supposed to. Who knows if it you never know if it'll go, so I don't want to mm -hmm. count on it. Um, and if so, it'll be super fun. And it's not like I wouldn't be blessed to go there. But would I Stay choose to you. spend my money? Uh, probably not. I'm telling you, trust me, listen you to don't me. Understand and I'll send you to some sites. No, I, I get it. I but I don't. China is like way back on my list because China is. Do they allow you to have Facebook in Japan? Yes, they don't. They're not. A, yes, <laughs> they're normal. How about that? Not normal. I don't want to say that. They're not controlled like that. They're a forward-thinking country compared to China. Anyways, I don't want to say they're normal because it's not the Chinese people's fault that, you know, that yeah, their, like their power government is. is. Yeah. Like we all know how you shouldn't blame a government. <laughs> you shouldn't hold the government against its people. Yes, <laughs> please don't. don't. This is people. a good, valid point right now. Anyways, oop, the questions disappeared. Okay, so you do the next one. Okay. Uh, Andy Wozniak, what inspired you to direct your own films? So I'm assuming you're talking to me because Heather Dorff has not directed the film, but she has produced it, so we can ask her that version of that question as well. Sure. Um, so it was a, uh, several things, actually. So the first of one was, as an actress, I started to get a lot of repeat stuff. Uh, there was one day where I had four different scripts from four different sets of people from four different parts of the world offering me roles and they were all flat, one note, stereotypical hot girl running in the woods with a group of four good looking friends in their 20s uh, and they come across a cannibal family. Uh, so A, there was nothing original about the scripts, B, there was nothing original about, original about the actual character, and C, I was just really uninterested and it was really heartbreaking to see the fact there were so many people thinking this way. Um, so that I was like, okay, there needs to be more original content and also as a horror fan, I was like, I want to watch original stuff. I don't need to see 20 of these movies, you know, with minor differences. Um, and then I had the, all these ideas, some of which I've made into films more, which will come where I just wanted to get them out of my mind and do it. Uh, with Truth or Dare, I wasn't supposed to originally direct. We had a short list of six directors after we had raised the funding. And unfortunately, at the time, three of the directors couldn't do it because of scheduling. So they would have pushed us back by another year. Um, and we didn't want to do that because we had the money and we had everything in place. And then another three wanted to tone down the script. And I really felt, uh, and I still do feel, that one of the best things about independent films and when you raise the budget is that you have a lot more leeway than a studio does. So the fact that these people want to tone down the script and make it more normal really kind of broke my heart because I felt the script was really good as is. And I also felt that the extreme elements in the script were necessary to the story. It wasn't like they were just added or gratuitous, which I'm against. But when they're there for the story and it makes logical sense, I didn't see a point to cut it. So uh, from there, it was actually one of the actresses involved who was like, you should direct it yourself. And then I got approval to do so. And that's how that happened. So there you go. For me, it was what they say, which I produced, and sort of, I, I did a little bit of directing that, but not as much. Um, but the whole idea arose on my first feature film that I'd ever gotten cast for, which was Afraid of Sunrise. 
I just love the crew involved, specifically the special effects makeup artists were just amazing, and some of the actors and stuff, and I just loved everyone, and I was like, man, I want to do this again, I want to do this again soon, with you, with everyone, you know, involved that I really like, and, and it was just like, why can't we? You know, I was really new to the scene, but I figured I could make it work, and that's what I did. I just figured it out as I went. It wasn't easy, but we raised the money on Indiegogo and stuff and made a fun little short film um, with some cool effects based on short, uh, you know, a short story I wrote. And it was just a really good time. It was also a really good learning experience. <laughs> to be honest, I would tell everyone, every, even every actress and actor, like, hey, do your own short film. Like, do everything involved with that. Be the producer. Be the, you know, the line. You Be everything in that because then the casting director, this and that, because then you really get a taste for what it's like, a very small taste, but a taste for what it's like to try and manage that crap. It's hard. And it gives you more of appreciation of the process and a better understanding and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's that's what made me do it, though. All right, so the next question is from Jamie Brown, and he says, if either of you could recreate a scene from a classic horror film any decade, which film scene would it be and what would you do to make it different? So, okay, so we kind of started to do this on Scream Queen Stream, and I would like to do more of this. We haven't because they're so labor intensive, but we should start trying to do more of them. Um, I'm really fascinated by taking iconic scenes in horror and flipping the sexes and see how it plays because I just think it's really interesting to see how if again we did it with the the actual shower scene in Psycho mm -hmm. and we reversed the um, what's her name gosh darn Jimmy it. Lee Curtis's mom yeah but I had it uh, <laughs> gosh darn it my mom's my mom's going uh, either way uh, the female role with a male actor and it's just really fascinating to see how it plays different but the same. It's really interesting. We tried to recreate it identical uh, to the original, as close as we could, obviously, with limited resources. And I think it turned out really, really well. So I really like that idea of sort of like flipping the notions of what we've seen both prior on its head by swapping the sexes out. I think that's really fascinating. Um, for me, it's so hard to pick like one scene. There's so many great moments. I look to just like honestly, the, probably the Halloween franchise because I think it's so iconic and amazing. Um, there's that wonderful scene in which uh, Michael Myers is wearing a sheet and he comes in uh, pretending to be the the secondary female character's boyfriend, and she assumes it's as such, and she's naked and she's sort of teasing him. Uh, and I think that that's a really cool scene. And I really like how it played out because we've got like the whole, she's thinking one thing, Michael thinking another thing, it's after a vicious kill. So the audience knows what's gonna happen. She's essentially a captured bird, basically. Right, like there's no physical way she can escape, right? Mm -hmm. um, he's blocking the exit, <laughs> but she doesn't know that she should be in fear. And I think that that's really fantastic. And I think that that's really cool. Right. Oh man, I don't really, I'm like thinking about this in my head and I just can't think, it's especially not one that I would change. That's the thing about classic horror films is they usually do things pretty right. That's why they're classic. So it's hard for me to go, I would change this. Like what would I change aside from what you said, like maybe gender reversal just mm -hmm. to see how that plays out. I mean, it's the only real thing I would change. I mean, if I could shoot. Oh. Well, I have another one too. I mean, not even the same, but, and I've talked about this a little bit different. A little bit before but I would love to see the shining remade with a female lead who's really strong so a completely different type of female lead right she is so Shelley Duvall played the character so passive I'm not sure if it was Kubrick's direction or her own choices or if it was on the script that way but she's such a passive sort of downtrodden female I think it'd be really interesting to see a very similar male character opposed to a woman that's his equal as opposed to somebody that's sort of appears or seems lesser than right. and is sort of like just constantly running in fear rather than making the choice to fight stand up and you know take him on right hmm. there you go I'm not gonna answer this because like I said aside from maybe like being seeing a lead like a female lead in Toy Days or a female lead in some of these movies I mean that's really the only thing I could see changing if we're gonna change anything most films are great as is and by the way shout out to Jamie Brown his movie friends don't like friends is currently available on VOD you should definitely check it out. It's a really good independent film. We should have said that. We should have been like, we would recreate a scene from Friends Don't Let Friends. <laughs> there, you go. there is. It's uh, it centers around a woman who 
uh, accidentally kills her boyfriend and her three best friends help her bury his body in the woods. So I feel like we could even just accidentally live that life. <laughs> right. Oh, great. So we're going to stop this episode right here, but we got so many great questions from you guys. There's going to be a part two. That's right. There's a sequel. Why? Because you always have to have a sequel. You do. Or no, maybe not always. No, <laughs> you shouldn't. But in this case, we will. But anyway. We have a sequel. Mm-hmm. So if your question wasn't answered here, stay tuned. We're going to have a part two available for you this week. All right, guys. See you soon. Thank you to everyone that submitted questions. And don't forget to hit the like button down below. And also subscribe and join our Patreon if you want to see extra content because YouTube hates us. I suck at the job of closing, just so you know. She has to do it. Okay, bye! Bye! <laughs> <laughs>